Hello friends, how's it going today? Um, this video is going to teach you how to make a US passport from home using your iPhone, Android, or other camera. Um, yesterday my husband needed a new passport photo and at first I was like, oh great, I'm gonna get out the studio lights, let me grab my camera, let me get the tripod. Ooh, should we get out the 12 foot background? Let's make a big deal out of it. And then I was like, man, sounds like a lot of work. I wonder if we can just do this with an iPhone and a white wall, some natural light. Let's give it a try and just see how it goes. And it turned out it worked perfectly. So um, things that you're gonna need in your hand is your iPhone, Android, other camera, uh, you need Photoshop, or I really think that you could apply the principles that I'm gonna show you to a different editing software, if that's what you use, if you're familiar with it. I really think that you could kind of just take these principles, plug it into a different editing software and still get a great result. And then you're gonna need a way to print. Um, I don't have a photo printing printer in my home because I don't like to waste ink on that. I would rather go to Walgreens or pharmacy, things like that for, for things that don't matter and um, pay 17, 30 cents, whatever, for them to print them. And that makes me happy. Maybe you have some photo paper laying around and a decent photo printer, go for it if you wanna use your ink. Um, I went to Walgreens, that was just my, my choice. Um, Couple things that are on this list, uh, you'll need a whitish or lightish colored wall. Um, and also it needs to have some bright natural light. I used a uh, door actually that is facing some big windows. So we just got a nice flood of light on his face and you'll see that. Um, so let's get started. Uh, first I wanna share with you my fail. I was thinking that, um, okay, let me get super close to your face with the with my iPhone so that way I'm not cropping it in and it's not going to be pixelated and all that that was like the wrong way to think because we're printing a two by two picture and what I got when I held my phone super close to his face was this really weird perspective um suddenly my husband has no ears his face is a weird shape like what's going on um I tried to work with this and I was just like no this is not what you look like so let's start over so I scratched that and then we got this um Please note, we did not choose this wallpaper, uh, but this is the door I used. The windows are right behind me. So I shot them, you know, I'm, I'm probably like two or three feet away. I did make sure that I got on a little step ladder, so I'm the same height as him. I'm not like shooting up or shooting down. I want my camera at eye level with my subject, um, especially for a passport photo, that's super important. So this was the original photo that I got. And from here, we are just going to work on this. I'm going to actually shrink this down and then plug it. Whoop, I'm going to get rid of that too. There we go. Plug it right here. So now it's kind of in my in my workspace. We're going to see everything. So your U.S. passport photo, and I just pulled this offline. This is current as of December 2020. These could change at some point. These are the rules and regulations. Um, here's the address if you want to go there or just like a normal person, Google US passport photo requirements. This is specifically what I'm looking at. Um, the size needs to be two by two inches and the head must be between one and one and three quarter inches from the bottom of the chin to the top of the head. Um, this do not digitally change the photo. We are not changing his face in any way. We're just kind of tweaking the background a little bit. Um, so I think that's okay. I'm going to slide that back over there. So we're just going to start here with our crop tool. You could also um, just hit C and get your crop tool. We're going to type in two inches by two inches and 300 is fine. And we're just going to do, I'm just going to drag in these corners in to make it a nice small size, get it pretty close. Usually I kind of this top third line, like kind of hit the eye with it. We just want a little space at the top, a little space at the bottom, and I hit enter. I double click. Okay, so now I zoom in. Now the next part, we want to make sure, where did it go? Here we go, um, that the head is between one and one and three eighths inches. Super important. So I'm gonna grab this. Um, you can hit M for the marquee tool. I, I just chose to click it. And I'm just gonna click the top of his head and to the bottom of his chin. And I can see width, it says um, 0 0.073, 
to the height is 1.277 inches. So boom, this is perfect. This is awesome. That is between one and one and three eighths inches. So we did really good on our first crop. If we didn't do good on our first crop, I'm going to hit Control D to deselect that little measuring area. I can go back to my history, go back to open, doop, 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 and we can crop it again till you get it right. Or if, if you need to just make it a little bigger, you can stay in your crop and then just crop from there in a little bit smaller if you needed to make his head or her head just a little bigger. But we got it right the first time. Um, this wall, honestly, this would probably be just fine. I do want to show you, though, in case you have, you're working like with a gray wall or a pattern wall or something like that. Uh, we're going to take our quick selection tool. The keyboard shortcut for that is W. I'm going to make this a little bigger, and I'm just going to go zoomy zoom. I'm so lucky because he doesn't have a lot of hair. If your subject has, like, curly hair with things, um, you know, you can, like, see the wall through it. It might be a little bit harder. Um, we got lucky with this guy because he doesn't have a whole lot of hair on his head. So I'm just going to kind of clean this edge up just a little bit because we don't want to get rid of his ears. There we go. I'm just I'm using it in the subtraction, the minus, to just sort of hit this edge. And I'm doing one single click. So I'm not clicking, now I'm clicking, and I'm dragging, I'm dragging, I'm dragging, I'm not clicking. I'm using my hand to navigate around uh, on the space bar. So I hit the space bar, I get this magic hand, and I can drag. I let go of the space bar, I'm back to a brush. I'm going to do single click, single click. I'm just holding, holding, holding as I zoom down there. That's okay. Fix this ear. Again, this image is going to be this big and probably really overdoing it anyway so actions um if you don't have a copy of my actions you can email me at gretchen at gretchenotero.com that will be in the description i'll gladly send them to you that way you can work right along with me everything in my actions can also be done by hand um, using the adjustment palette here and things like that i um just prefer to use the actions so i think you guys should get a copy of those so click level slider I'm going to double click here and I'm just going to whoop, bring up the back, the, the white. There we go. If you had a gray wall, that's going to help a lot. Um, I'm going to flatten this by hitting F8. That's coming from my actions. You could also go to layer flatten. And if you had a gray wall or a pattern wall or anything like that, I would just do what we just did with selecting the background. Hit B for brush. And then select, I just kind of drug up here and got white and da 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 and paint it white. Let me paint it black so you could just see. So that would, you know, if you're going a darker color, obviously, but we want to go white with it. So if you did have a colored wall, now you have a white wall. Control D. Awesome. We have one passport photo. Um, so now we want a way to print this. Um, if I'm going to Walgreens or CBS or any of those labs, four by sixes are the cheapest to print so we want to put this image this two by two image on a four by six piece of paper so when they print it it'll be the right size so i'm just going to say file new and a custom size four inches by six inches it's already in there because i did this yesterday white background everything else is good and just say create I go back to this image, I say Control A to select all, Control C to copy, go here and Control V to paste. Super important part here. Um, if we printed this and we go to cut it, we don't we can't see really where the edge is. So I'm gonna double click on my layers palette down here. Say stroke, I'm just gonna pick like a light gray color, okay. One inch, I'm sorry, one pixel on the outside and say okay now we have a little vague line that we can follow and then i'm just going to say control i'm sorry v to move it move it up and then control v to put another one down here again we do not have the border so i'm just going to go to my layers palette um right click copy layer style go to the second layer right click paste layer style 
if your layer palette is missing, um, I have another video to show you how to set up your screen on your workspace just like mine. I'll put a link to that in the description. Or if you're like, I don't want to watch another video, just show me. Just go to Windows and then put out layers. Whoa, it's all gone. Window layers. There we go. And it'll toggle it on and off. So great. Now we have two um Passport size photos on one four by six piece of paper. This is basically what you need to print or what you need to send off to Walgreens or whatever. Um, they did it in literally 15 minutes, guys. I used none of my printer ink. Um, so it's like, and I did print two copies just in case I messed one up or whatever. Uh, I wanted to have a backup, so that was super helpful. So file, save as, and you know, I was just passport photo. 12, I don't know what the date is, 1206, maybe 20. And I flatten it or I save it as a JPEG. That way it's all one layer. So save, say OK. And then this is actually what I got back from Walgreens. Let's just say file open. Open these two. Interesting note um, what you see on your screen won't necessarily be what a commercial. Um, or a consumer photo lab is going to provide to you. So we gave them this really nice image with nice color and all of that. And they gave us this kind of like yellowy, creamy thing back. It'll work for a passport photo. However, if you were printing like portraits, things like that, like things you want to hang in your home, I would not recommend going to Walgreens, Costco, or a, a you know, consumer lab. I would definitely stick with a pro lab. So you get these nice skin tones. Um, this is something I would definitely submit for a passport photo. It's fine. Um, this was, you know, this color, this skin tone is something I would want in my home. But that's kind of a little sidebar there. But anyways, um, once I got this, I used my little cutter. See, I have this cutter here. Get rid of that. Um, to trim them up, get two by two. And we were able to pop it in the mail yesterday. So the whole process, um, not including driving to Walgreens, which we needed to go to anyways, um, super dry right now. We needed some lotion. So the whole process was like 15 minutes from beginning to end. And uh, we have some passport photos. So if you have any questions, um, if you run into any problems, let me know Gretchen at GretchenOtero.com or leave me a comment. Um, I'd love to hear from you guys. Um, every country's passport requirements are different. So maybe you're Canadian, maybe you're Mexican, maybe you're German. I am going to be making some more videos just for your country. So you can kind of follow along um, if you're wanting to do it like today and the video is not up then just apply these same principles. Google your country's passport requirements and you can apply these same principles to your country and get it done. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, all that fun stuff. And um, if you have any Photoshop questions, if you want a video done, if you're like, man, how do I do this? Please show me, help me, help me. Send it over to me. Um, send me a comment and I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much, guys.